with it's your girl Jim One and if y'all want to see how I got this freaking phone set up here, y'all be like, you is so freaking it, enemy necessary. Anyways, y'all, um, I wanted to basically come on here today and do a video that I have been contemplating about. Um, y'all know I have a hard time with like opening up on my channel, um, with y'all about like my life and my personal experiences, only because I feel like. You know, I don't want to be judged, but then I also feel like I realized that, like, social media has become a therapeutic platform for me, meaning I use it for therapy for myself. I hate being trapped in my own thoughts, so for me to be able to talk out loud, I feel weird, but when I'm talking out loud and I'm talking on a camera, I feel a sense of relief, and this is something that I have been like contemplating talking about for a long 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 time um and the reason why i contemplated talking about it for so long okay sorry the reason the reason why i like contemplate talking about it so long is because like i said i don't want people to judge me or the life that i've been living meaning like basically just yeah um so before i get into this video i want to give you guys a little bit of like a piece of information that i feel like you guys should know um and then you'll be able to understand more um about why yeah so basically um i started getting into dating that's a strong word not i started to get into dating at the age of 15 um and the first person that i actually dated it was a long distance relationship and i couldn't see that person when i went off so like my family my friends didn't take that relationship serious because and i take that back i didn't i didn't do the whole dating thing to where you date somebody for two months and then you don't talk to them i jumped into straight into relationships and the first relationship i got into um it was at age 15 so when I was with that person, like I said, it was a long distance thing, so people didn't take it seriously. Like, nobody took that relationship serious, and that was fine, that was cool, that was dandy, okay? I took it serious. Me and that person, we talked for over a year, you know what I'm saying? We didn't see each other, we didn't, like, get the whole hand physically. I didn't meet that person, I met the person on the internet, and we just, you know what I'm saying? It just blew into something bigger. With that being said, you know, um... After me and that person, like, went our separate ways um, after a year and some change, I ended up meeting, um, I ended up meeting somebody, and this is the point that y'all need to know about, is that relationship is one, and then this little piece that I'm going to tell y'all, I figured out that I'm attracted to masculinity, and when I say that, I mean, I don't care what type of form that it comes in, long as it a masculine figure, I'm attracted to him. I'm not attracted to um, anything else but masculinity. I, I'm very attracted to masculinity. I'm just leaving it at that. Y'all can put two and two together. You get it. Uh, with that being said, when I broke up with the person that I was with for over a year, I ended up going with this other person that was very masculine, and it it made me understand what I was attracted to. This was a person that I could be, like, physical with, like, touching, hugging, stuff of that nature. And, again, my mama don't even know this, okay? And I'm sorry that they got to figure out like this. But my friends knew. Um, And then I tried my best to tell my mother about me figuring out this thing about myself and it didn't go so well so it drew me to want to be able to be very secretive about my life and like uh, from those two relationships it stemmed on to what i'm getting into today which is my overly toxic relationships and domestic violence and da -da -da -da, all of that going to play into those two big pieces of information um with that being said the person that i was able to figure out myself with which is me like a masculinity um we went on and we you like we was in a relationship for a little over two years like a year almost two years and then that person ended up cheating on me and we just called it quits and from that on i felt as if like i've been dating this person for a year and some change and this person 
You know what I'm saying? I can't touch this person. Then I get in a relationship with this person. And my people, like my mama didn't accept the relationship. It was just a whole bunch, a whole bunch, a whole bunch. Of, okay? So with that being said, I felt as if I was able to stay to myself about a lot of things. So when I went out to college, um... Me knowing that I like masculinity and knowing that I'm attracted to masculinity, um, a lot of different masculinity uh people started to gravitate towards me, and because I was on my own and I already knew that I don't have to tell my family about what I'm doing, I don't have to, you know what I'm saying, explain to them I'm talking to this person because of this. I don't, you know what I'm saying, it was easy for me to just be to myself. And the one thing that my mom had told me before I went out to college was do not date a local, don't date no local because you'll get trapped. And I felt that because I already couldn't open up to her about the lifestyle that I wanted to live or, like, what I was attracted to, I felt as if that statement didn't, res like, didn't resonate with me so well. So I continued to do what I wanted to do, which is I got into a relationship with this person um, that wasn't, y'all can read between the lines, but it wasn't the type of person that was, like, the ordeal masculine figure. It wasn't a masculine male, boom, I said it. Um, with being with this person... It was a lot of things. There was a lot of red flags that I feel like if I was able to talk to my mom about the situation, I would be. She would be able to tell me like, "Don't talk to this person," or you know what I'm saying. Like this is not what you want to do. But but because of the fact that like I was already like to myself and wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Didn't have nobody I could talk to besides my friends. And then my friends was my age and they didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I continued to talk to this person. And with that being said, the relationship quickly took a turn. Like, this person was an alcoholic. And they really didn't bring too much to my life that I felt like I could have grown from. It actually took more from me. It made me realize that I could be loved, so I thought. But then I realized that that's not real love because real love doesn't it, it doesn't hurt physically or emotionally or or yeah or mentally like love does not hurt in no way shape or form and with that person um i will never forget like this one incident to where i had came home this person had been drinking and i was playing like i was legit playing and it was like a bb gun sitting on my on my uh table and they picked up the bb gun and like i'm so god like i'm so happy for one it wasn't a real gun or for two the bb gun didn't have no bullets in it because they picked up the bb gun and they just went to shooting at me like they had literally blacked out and forgot that who i was or i was the person that they so-called love you get what i'm saying and again that was a situation that was very traumatic to me and i wish that i was able to call my mama or call somebody in my family and tell them that but i couldn't because again i wasn't i didn't think that you know me calling them would make them understand like this is why i'm doing what i'm doing or they were going to tell me like hey this is why you shouldn't be doing this i don't want to hear that because i'm trying to figure myself out and you can't tell me what you think i should do you get what i'm saying uh, yeah, so with that being said, it just played with my mind, and from that point on, I was looking everywhere for, like, to feel that void. I wanted to feel that love again because that person showed me in different ways that they actually loved me, you know what I'm saying? But, again, now that I look back on that love, don't supposed to hurt, and that love really did hurt. And it was, like, other situations with that particular individual that, um, it was just, like, they had got drunk again, and, like, we were getting a physical fight. And, again, I couldn't call nobody. I just had to go through that on my own. And I wanted to, like, legit wanted to just run home and be like, Mama, just hold me. And it's not saying that my mama would do anything wrong because my mama, if she was there for me, she would be there for me. But it was just a simple fact that the matter is I felt in my heart I had already made in my mind that, like, I can't call her with these situations because of the lifestyle that I chose to live. And I know that I didn't want to have to put that stress on top of this. You know what I'm saying? And then I just, that was just something that I mentally had to go through on my own. And then when I left, um, because, um, mind you, y'all, I'm telling y'all all this because from the age of 15 to the age of 22, I've only been single for a period of time, one year. Like, legit, I, I asked that and I did the math. And, like, I would go in a relationship, you know what I'm saying, for six months, you know, take two months, and then 
go back to another relationship. And I and I never did like the little dating thing to where you date somebody for three months and da da. No, I never did that. I always every time I was with somebody, I would be with them for like years. And so like for from fifteen to twenty two, like year take two minutes, take two months. Going back into another relationship, not taking time to heal and learn what this relationship taught me. So, with that being said, I continued on. And I never understood how to actually love somebody. Or, you know, I felt like I needed somebody to physically put their hands on me. Or for somebody to... It was like a traumatic thing in my head. Like, I felt like if you didn't hit me... Because, like, this person used to always say... You know, everybody used to tell me, like, don't go with this person. You know, like, the locals. It's like, don't go with this person because this person, you know, is known for putting their hands on their females and i'm like yo they ain't finna hit me but then when i got with them i was like you know why this person not hitting me if you love me why you not hitting me type situation and like they would usually they would literally say like you want me to hit you you want me to put my hands on you i ain't even gonna give you that satisfaction and that like really played on my mind so when i finally got the courage to leave that person i came up into atlanta and when i came to atlanta the person that i originally started dating when i was 15 years old we um rekindled and they actually moved with me and when we moved together again because i was just still in the mindset of like what i had just went through and not being able to talk to somebody older about what i was going through i didn't understand the lesson that was supposed to be brought from that situation so i hindered all of those feelings and i brought it into the other relationship mind you we still young and then this person was a, a male masculine figure so like, my family, you know, was like, hey, I'm happy for you. But when they said that I'm happy for you, it's like, I'm happy for you. But they should be coming to move with you. And I'm like, listen, y'all don't even know that I've been I've been playing mama for the longest. Because the person that, you know what I'm saying, that I was in college with, like, this person was 10 years older than me. They had a son that was 10 years younger than me. It was 10, 20, 30, you know what I'm saying? And I'm playing mama. I'm going, I'm leaving work, going home, cooking and cleaning, you know what I'm saying? Making sure the child all right, buying grocery, going back to Like, it was just a lot, and I didn't have nobody to talk to about that situation. So, when they came, I'm like, finally, I'm going to be able to go through this, like, what life's supposed to be like. And I'm going to be able to talk to my family about this. But it was like, I could talk to them. But then it was also like, oh, y'all too young to be checking up. Like, y'all playing house and y'all ain't even married. And I'm like, well, damn, like, I ain't going to never be able to be happy for somebody to understand, like, listen. So I was telling the person that I was with about what was going on with me. And, like, I was telling them how they, the person had put their hands on me, how they verbally was abusive, and how they told me they would go take me to the woods and do all this stuff to me and leave me for dead. Like, I was telling them that. And the relationship was okay because they understood and because we had grew up together from 15 to now I'm 20-something. And, like, we growing up together so they understand, you know, what I'm feeling. With that being said, it went from that to, you know, it was just, it was bad. It was legit bad. So, it went from that, and it went on up. And I won't never forget, like, we had got into this argument because, I again, I didn't know how to love. You know what I'm saying? So, they wanted me to love from what they wanted me to love. Being with different people in different ways that people want you to love them. And if you're not a strong-minded person, you, you got to be able to say, I, this is how I'm going to love, and you're going to meet me here, or it ain't going to be nothing. But I wanted to love them the way that they wanted me to love them, but I didn't know how to because i didn't love myself and with that being said it was it was an incident to where i came home one day and it was just bad because i had laid out some i had laid out some rose petals and stuff like that trying to like you know be that person so i felt like on the movie type situation and they wasn't appreciative of it and i was pissed off because i'm like i just set up here and did all this and you don't even care and we ended up getting into a physical fight. And the fight led into them telling me that they would go leave me. And they we had took pictures. They had cut up the pictures, put it in the bathtub, threw all my clothes out everywhere. And it was just a bad, bad situation. And this, like, was a continuous thing. And, again, I felt like I couldn't call nobody and tell them because, for one, I was embarrassed. And, two, I knew that I wouldn't go leave that person because I wasn't tired. And, three, it was just, like, 
I really want this to work for me. You know what I'm saying? And then when I finally spoke out about it, it was like I was signed out, like I was lying. And I'm like, yo, I'm not lying. Like, this is really happening. And with that being said, because everybody thought I was lying about the situation that was going on, it was like, you know, they were telling me how I should change myself to fall into the category for them to be able to love me and i'm like yo and i'm trying to do that and it really fucked with me mentally like it really got my mind going in a different state like yo to this day i'm still healing because all the relationships that i have been in have been the same way and i'm like what is it that i'm doing to make somebody want to physically put their hands on me when i know that i'm a good person but then i'm gonna tell you so Fast forward on, I moved when that person left. I continued to date um, relationships and stuff like that. And this is when I got into, like, doing a three-month, four-month type situation type of situation. So, me just being to myself, it became boring. Like, I'm like, yo, I figured out what I think I want. I figured out what I should do. So, I had started looking into, like, going on dating apps. Not really to look for people, but just to have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? To have that conversation piece and to network and that type of thing. With that, it was just like, I would meet people who wasn't who they said they was who would, you know what I'm saying, looking for a handout or looking for a come up. And I'm like, yo, I ain't got that for you, baby. Like, I can't help you when, you know what I'm saying, you're not helping yourself type situation. So that quickly ended. I took a break again from that whole situation, and then I went back into it. This time, I actually found somebody who is a masculine figure, and... Um, there wasn't the male masculine figure, but this was a masculine figure. And I felt like this person really did love me and really did, you know, really care for me. So what I did was, I like, you know what I'm saying, really try to go head in for it. But because all of this stuff they had went through in my past, I didn't know how to be accepting of the love that they were giving me. And I didn't know how to give them the love in return that they was wanting. Because, again, I want to love you like this person. I want to love you like this person. I want to love you like this person. This, you know, like all of this person, all of these things going through my mind. So when I actually got somebody who want to wait on me hand and foot, I don't know how to, you know what I'm saying, like receive that. So... I shut down, like, you know, I'm in a relationship physically, but in my mind, mentally, I've shut down, and that took a strain on that individual, and then, like, it just blew up, you know what I'm saying, it blew up because this person, you know what I'm saying, they was, like, crying out for me to show them attention, and they ended up putting their hands on me, and I'm like, yo, like, all this stuff I done told you, I done been through, you gonna put your hands on me again, like, God, like, I'm just, I'm pissed off, like, I'm mad because I'm like, yo, but then it was like a light bulb went off in my mind, and that situation, I get why they was mad, and I'm not giving nobody a right to ever put their hands on you, but I took responsibility for that because I'm like, they did that because they were crying out for me, you know what I'm saying, like, they were crying out for me to love them, and they fighting for me, and I'm not, you know, giving them that, and again, I'm not ever making it okay for somebody to put their hands on you because, no, that's not what we're doing, sis, like, no. But at the end of the day, it was just like I had to do some self evaluation, and I made all this video to be able to tell you guys, like, listen, it is okay to be alone. It is okay for you to take some time to like really, really figure out what you want to like, what you want out of a relationship before just jumping to relationship, relationship, relationship. And if somebody putting their hands on you, regardless of the fact, find you somebody to talk to because that shit will put you in a depressed state. And to be honest, I'm being open with y'all. I'm still fighting with that. I'm still healing myself from that because all of this stuff happened. I'm only 23 years old, y'all. And all of this stuff happened so quickly. And it's like, you know, when I get married, I don't want to bring that into the relationship. But again, that goes into me having to find the, like find peace within myself and find that, you know what, like, listen, it's okay for you to be to yourself, it's okay for you to say, you know what, you put your hands on me, you gotta go. Just because somebody put their hands on you don't mean that they love you. Don't look for that because you are worth it. You are beautiful. And if ain't nobody never go tell you, sir, like, baby girl, I'm in your corner. And I just want to come on here and tell y'all that because like I said, I ain't never been this open with y'all on my channel. But I felt like me being open was a therapy session, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know now that I am worth it and I'm strong enough to talk about it. And it'll be more videos like this that's going to come where I'm going to tell y'all about, like, 
individual um individual thing that really went on but like i said i didn't want to do it because i didn't want about to judge me but i don't give a fuck no more because me helping somebody like me being able to help somebody go through something and somebody to be able to see that you can't like get through this you know what i'm saying and you're not alone because there's a lot of people out there like that you know it is what it is. So, yeah, if you got anything that you want to say or anything, y'all can leave me a little note in the comment section down below. I really read every single last one of y'all comments. Um, if you, you know what I'm saying, if this video, if you understood this video or if you are overcoming this, you can give this video a thumb up. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, it's fine. And... Like, yeah, I hope you guys subscribe so when I do start opening up more and putting out more videos like this, y'all be able to get the notifications. So hit that notification bell. And I love you guys so freaking much. And just know that you are worth it. You are worth being loved. You are worth every pit, every bit of the love that you are willing to give out. You are worthy of getting it back ten times fold. Like, I'm telling you, I love you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in my next